Hey writers, if you don't know me, I'm author Brittany Wang and I'm so excited to be here with my friend and fellow author Caitlin Duncan as we share with you a shocking writing tip for writing better stories and stronger first drafts. Plus, we'll actually be using this tip to help workshop some of your story ideas at the end. So stick around if you wanna see how it works in action. Hope you guys are excited. To start off though, let us know in the comments if you agree with this statement, okay? One of our biggest problems as writers is that we often spend forever drafting thousands and thousands of words only to get feedback from beta readers or agents that the stories we've worked on for so long are confusing or not strong enough, which then equals tons of revising time or completely rewriting again and again. Does this sound like your writing process or experience at all? Let us know that. Um, but during our chat today, we want to share a tip that can potentially help you develop a stronger story from the start and cut down on having to do tons and tons of drafts and revisions later. But first, hi, Caitlin. <laughs> I'm so excited that you decided to do this live stream with me. Before we get into things, I would love for you to tell my audience a little bit about yourself. Um, and guys, you got to know Caitlin. She's an author tuber. She's probably going to say that, but she's awesome. So yeah, go ahead. Introduce yourself, Caitlin. Hey, everyone. Um, my name is Caitlin Duncan. Yes, I am an author tuber. I've been on YouTube for about a year now. And I do writing vlogs and writing tips on my channel. And I also do live streams and interviews as well. I am traditionally published. I have 13 books published with HQ Digital, which is a digital first imprint of HarperCollins. And yeah, um, you can connect with me online pretty much anywhere, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and we have all of her links down below so you can check her out afterwards. But um, we got to do something really cool, which sort of inspired this live stream. So Caitlin, can you tell us a little bit about what we got to do? Yes. So uh, J January of this year, um, we went to an event in Connecticut where we got to um, experience a workshop with Tara Sullivan. Now, she is a member of SCBWI, which is the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, which I am also a member of. And she was also a mentor for me at the Big Sur at Cape Cod workshop. And she is a wonderful, wonderful speaker. She has so much knowledge. And I was so excited because Brittany and I live in the same state, we were able to go to this event together. So Brittany's gonna tell you a little bit about what we learned. Yeah, Caitlin, oh my gosh, when you told me, you're like, come to this writer's workshop. I, like, I didn't even know they did this. So I was super excited to go. And it was, it was a wonderful workshop. We're obviously not gonna impact everything she said because you can go to one of her workshops and she has different resources on her website and stuff you can check out. But we're gonna pull out just like one thing that she talked about that is just blowing our minds and really helping us. So what is this awesome tip you may ask? Well, um, at this workshop, one of the things that Tara was really talking about was writing a synopsis for your story. Now, if you're like, what does this have to do with writing a first draft or getting a better story, just hang on with me. Um, but basically, just for anybody who doesn't know what a synopsis is, it's usually a one to two page summary of the main storyline of your book. So all the main plot points from beginning to spoilery end. Um, this focuses on your main character's arc. So it doesn't have every single thing that happens in your book, but basically the main storyline, like I've said before. Um, now a synopsis is typically written after a book is finished so you can use it to help submit to agents so you can eventually get published but what was really fascinating is that while many of us go through this process we write a few drafts we get feedback and then revise those drafts and then we write a synopsis to maybe get published Tara shared how it can actually be even more beneficial to flip it <laughs> and to first write a synopsis. Um, so instead of writing thousands and thousands of words, you're writing a two page, one to two page synopsis of the main stuff in your book. Um, you get feedback on that and revise that, which is a lot quicker and sort of easier to revise because you're only, again, revising two pages. And then you write a one to two um, your first draft or even just your second draft. Um, and she went on to explain how she used to, um, right, Caitlin? She used to like write these books and submit them and then people would be like, oh, this is wrong and this is not working and you need to totally like <laughs> rework all of this. And she'd have to rewrite books from scratch over and over again. And this is obviously with her um, traditionally published 
avenue, right, with her agents and editors and stuff. Um, but once she started sort of flipping things and doing the hard work of some of the revision of her overall plot arcs and different things first, it cut down on her revision time and she started off with something so much stronger to begin with. Um, so in short, Here's what it looks like in a little bit more detail. And Caitlin, I don't know if maybe I'll do one part and then you can do the next part and we'll sort of go back and forth. Sure. Um, but the first step is to write your synopsis and you could even just do this with a pitch. And that's sort of what we're going to talk about um, a little in a little bit. But that would be the first step. So you can do this um, before you even write a first draft. Or if you're more of a pantser, I could all, we'd also say that you could like pants your first draft and then write a synopsis and use these same methods. Um, but that is your first step. And then, Caitlin, do you want to talk about the second one? Yes. Um, also, you can sh after you uh, write your synopsis, um, sh you can share your synopsis or pitch with a writer friend of yours or even just someone that you trust in your life who likes your books or likes your writing. And you can ask for three things that they loved about the synopsis because you do want to get positive feedback when you can, um, as well as three questions that they had during reading. And we're going to go into the types of questions that you as maybe a reader for a friend and questions that someone may ask you about your book. Yeah. So yeah. And when you're, you would then take those questions, you take that feedback and then you rewrite your synopsis or your pitch in order to answer those questions, address issues and add clarity. And what I think what we're going to share a little bit in um, a second is how some of those questions have actually um, given us inspiration to entirely new ideas or new directions for the story. Um, Caitlin, you want to talk about that last part? Yep. And then after that, um, we've gone through a, diff a few rounds, Brittany, um, I have sent over mopses to her maybe twice. Um, and I did it with another CP of mine. And you sort of, um, you can keep shopping it. So say you, I gave my synopsis to Brittany, and she asked me my three questions, and I tweaked my synopsis a little bit, you know, I could send it back to her or another CP and see if they additionally have any questions on top of that. And then as you go through the process, you get more and more, you get your synopsis will get a lot tighter and more succinct and that's what where you really have all the specifics of your novel before you get started writing it yeah definitely and then um, as we were talking Caitlin was like it'd be really cool to like give them some examples of what these kinds of questions are so Caitlin do you want to talk through some of these examples Yes, absolutely. And these are kind of vague because I wanted to sort of talk about what types of questions you may see. Like, so when we're talking about questions someone may ask, you want to move from more confusing to more compelling questions. So if someone asks you, you know, why is this character doing this? If they can't understand like why a character is doing something, there might be a problem with nailing down motivation or maybe you need to be more specific about your character. And then say, for instance, they ask, what is the significance of this character or why are they doing this? What is, why is this event happening? Um, and if they don't understand a character's action, there may not be enough setup uh, in your synopsis already. So you may need to tweak your, your setup in that sense. And then examples, I don't understand X, Y, and Z. Again, you wanna be very specific in your synopsis. You really have such a short amount of page space to explain a whole story. And I know a lot of people have problems with that, but this really helps you as a writer get really specific about your story. So when you're ready to write it or you're ready to revise it, you know exactly what you're doing. So some compelling questions. So as you go through this process numerous times and you, you start honing in on your story, if your reader is asking compelling questions like, oh, what happens next? Um, how will this situation turn out? Those are questions that are not really confused. They're not confused anymore. They're excited. And that is a really good point to be with your synopsis. Definitely. And again, if you stick with us, we're going to actually apply this to some of your story ideas in a little bit. Um, but after um, you get some of these kinds of questions and do some revision of your synopsis or pitch, again, these are sort of the outcomes you can have. If you haven't started drafting after doing this method, you now have a story that's worth writing. You have proven the concept. You have gotten people to lean in and ask those compelling questions and be like, yes, I want you to write this story because it sounds amazing. And I totally get the the character and their motivations and and just like the flow of what's happening and so you know that it's a story worth writing and that people are going to be really interested to read it 
Or if you have already started drafting, um, but you now decide to take a break from the drafting, and I think I see a couple people in the comments that are like, oh, I should try this, um, that you would now take a break and try to summarize um, your story in that synopsis form. Or again, you can do a pitch, and now you have a revision plan. Now you have an idea of, okay, this slowed down, or this wasn't working for this person, and, and now I want to change this up, and now I've sent it back to them, and they really like it, and, and now I think I have an idea of how I want to take this draft and revise it. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. So how has this uh, writing tip helped us specifically? Um, Caitlin, do you want to go first? Yep. Um, so as I mentioned, I did send it uh, to my current synopsis to Brittany and some several of my other CPs for feedback and questions. Um, this specific novel, novel, <laughs> novel, I've been having trouble with um, for some time. It's just I, I don't feel right about it. I don't feel right about it in my gut. So um, these amazing writers gave me some awesome things to think about. Um, things, uh, I tend to be very close with my book. I don't know if anyone else feels the same way so that I know the whole world in my in my mind. And when people are asking questions for me to be more specific, I started to understand that I needed to explain more. And it just really helps with my process about getting this story nailed down before I write it. Because backstory on this story, I had already written it once before. And I sort of um, felt for Tara when she, I forget how many times she said she had to rewrite that story. It was, it was a four, three or four times. It was a lot and it was start to scratch. finish. Yeah. yeah. So um, I didn't want to do that again. I already wrote this story once. I spent a year revising it and then I trashed it. So I didn't want to do it again. So this process has really um, opened my eyes to getting it, nailing the story down at the beginning and then not having to worry about it after. Right. And this is not ultimately to say that you won't have some kind of revisions. Like, oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm just talking about, you know, getting the story yeah. down for a draft and then right. having to do revisions after that. Right, exactly, exactly. So yeah, so I think it's just like this, this launching off point for both of us that we just feel like it's definitely helping us with our current story ideas. Like we already feel ahead. Like we already feel like we're not gonna have as much revision going forward, which is awesome. Um, was there anything else you wanted to share before I share? No, go ahead. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I sent, I can't remember if I sent my query or my synopsis to you. Um, I feel like it might have been the query. So you can even do this with queries, I feel like too, where it's just like you have not even like the whole story written out. Um, but I got feedback um, from Caitlin. I also did that with a few other people before I was submitting to um, to author mentor match actually at that point. But I just wanted to test it with that. And now going forward with some new stories, um, I actually um, have one story that I'm working through as I go uh, through Tomi Adeyemi's writing course that she has. And so she's the author of Children of Blood and Bone, if you've heard of it. And she actually encouraged us to take just a pitch of our story before we even start plotting and drafting and to sort of test it out and shop it out with friends as well. So that's what I've been doing even at the pitch level um, with a few of my friends I think that are even in the comments with me um, right now that I've asked like hey ask me three questions about this pitch and it's helped me so much I've sent the pitch back to them and they've been like oh this is so much stronger and like I'm that much more intrigued and oh what about this and it's just really encouraging gets me even more excited to write the story um, and then I'm also using this method um, as I plan what I'm calling a short story serial um, so it's basically like a TV show but in book form format with a bunch of short stories that all follow one storyline and um, I'm using it to sort of present to my patrons like here's my concept here's my episode like ideas and um, yeah so I'm gonna be doing that very soon and uh, getting their feedback for that and asking a lot of the same like give me three questions tell me three things that intrigues you and um, it's just like it's so helpful to have feedback I know some of you I want to go through the comments in a little bit um, but some of you might be asking like where do I find like writing friends like it doesn't have to be writing friends. Like I think Caitlin said too, it can be just good friends that like to read or like to read in your genre. Um, but definitely there's so many like writerly uh, communities. We have a great writer community on Instagram. Um, so you can always follow us and we can get you connected. Um, and then, yeah, there's different programs like uh, Patreon. There's a lot of authors that have Patreon groups. Um, and so, yeah, hopefully that helps. But let us know if you have any other specific questions about where to find people because I know that that can be a hurdle. <laughs> um, 
Caitlin, have you seen any specific comments that maybe we should address? I've been trying to watch, but not doing a very good job. It's hard. I'm trying to listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to answer a question um, from Martin about, um, I think this is great for novels. Does it work for nonfiction and chick children's picture books? Mm -hmm. um, I can't speak on nonfiction because I don't write nonfiction, but I think it would be great for picture books, especially because you have a very small amount of words to write a picture book and nailing down all of the specifics ahead of time will only help you. So, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Um, we uh, let's keep moving forward. And then guys, if we've missed your question, hang on to it for a second and we can answer it um, maybe after we've gone through a couple of the pitches. So stick with us. Um, but what we, let's see, in Tara's workshop, we talked about using this method with a synopsis as we've been talking about, right? That's again, telling your story from start to finish in one to two pages. But we wanted to show you how to do this in action today. Um, so to save time, we asked a bunch of you guys on Instagram uh, for brave souls that would share their story ideas with us, um, just one to two sentences. And then um, what we're gonna do is workshop it. And we, we just wanna encourage you guys that you could even do this at the pitch level, even if you didn't submit something today. Um, you could take this at the pitch level, get some feedback, Keep revising it, keep making it stronger, and then use that pitch as the cornerstone for your synopsis. And then write a synopsis, and then pitch that, and then get feedback from that, and make that really good. And then you have this like all the the core, the great foundation to write a really good story. So hopefully all of that makes sense. Um, real quick, um, if you don't know what a pitch is, because that's what we're going to sort of transition in to look at right now. Um, it's basically um, sharing the concept of your story in one to two sentences. And so for example, um, at one pitch formula might be something like this. When an inciting incident happens, your protagonist must take a certain course of action against an antagonist or antagonistic force to attain a goal. And to just use a fun um, pop culture example, let's take Stranger Things. When a boy disappears, his friends must confront an evil force to get him back. Now you guys can see here that this is very vague and if you had no concept of what Stranger Things was, you might be like, okay, like a boy has disappeared, evil, like what kind of evil force? You might ask, um, get him back from where? Um, what kind of boy is this? Like, who are his friends? And, and those are the confusing questions. I want right. to, so either those are the type of confusing questions that we're going to touch on in a minute. Exactly. So <laughs> those would sort of um, give you some fodder to maybe make it stronger. And so it might, um, once you get some feedback back and you um, then go to revise, you might come up with something more like this. When a young boy disappears, his mother, a police chief, and his three closest friends must confront a human eating monster from a parallel dimension to get him back. Um, and so if, if you had no idea, anybody in the comments didn't know what Stranger Things was and like which pitch like, <laughs> you know, sort of draws you in more. It's, it's the one with the specifics, right? It's the one that is really telling more um, about the story. So um, again, we want to take the rest of our time to see how this works in action. Um, so we asked a bunch of you on Instagram again to submit uh, one to two line pitch stories. Um, and as we look at each pitch, Caitlin and I will first say a few things we liked about the pitch, um, things that drew us in. And then we're going to ask two or three questions we had while reading. If you are not the owner of this pitch, feel free to jump in with us and also share things you liked and questions you have that you think can help this person out. If you are the owner of this pitch, first of all, again, you are super brave and amazing, and thank you for submitting. Thank you. Um, they were so fun. <laughs> yeah, they were so fun to get. You guys, these are going to be such awesome stories. I'm excited to read them someday. Um, but if this is your pitch, feel free to interact with us interact with us in the comments, especially if you already know the answer to like a clarifying question that we're asking. But possibly the best thing you can do is simply to sit back, receive the feedback, take some notes, let it simmer over the next couple days, revise your pitch and story idea going forward with the feedback. Also, we wanted to you to keep in mind this. When someone points out a point of confusion or potential problem, they might offer an idea to fix it al along with that sort of point of confusion. But we want to encourage you taking the feedback and remember you ultimately get to decide how to address it in your story. So someone might point out a problem, but you get to decide the, the solution, how you want to address it. So hopefully that's encouraging, Caitlin. I don't know if you wanted to add any clarity. Yeah, it's it's like a it's a really great tip for getting 
any sort of critique on your book, whether it's here at the synopsis or pitch level or um, your full book, if you send it to a critique partner, people will give you ideas, um, but it's ultimately your book. If you don't think an idea fits, then don't use it. But it's sort of, these questions are sort of to get your brain, you know, pumping a little bit and saying like, maybe I should think about this a little more, so. Right. Yeah. Love it. Cool. So if these pictures are yours, please let us know in the comments if you are here live, because we'd love to chat with you. Um, but we're going to jump into our first pitch and we're probably, we're going to top this off at um, max an hour, um, but maybe shorter. So we're going to try to get through them as fast as possible. But our first brave soul is Allie from Instagram. That's her handle. If you want to go check her out, she is writing a history slash history fantasy. And um, I'll just read it here. She says, after letters to her brother are returned unopened, Millie sneaks onto the front lines of World War I, only to find nothing is as it seems. So first, yeah, Allie's here in the comments. There she is. Yeah. And um, yes, if anyone can let Allie know what are the things that are making you lean in that are exciting about this pitch um, that you like, and then we'll move into some questions. Um, Caitlin, do you have anything right off the bat or you want me to go? Yeah, ahead? so um, do you wanna share the questions after the things we liked? Yeah, maybe start okay. off with that, yeah. Yeah, so what I, I like this, it was very compelling to me um, because I want to know about the brother and what about the letters, um, but more specifically, I wanted to dive deeper. So while I am compelled, I also wanted to get more specific. So first of all, the, the nothing as it seems. Um, for me, I don't... Um, Initially, if I didn't have the the genre, I couldn't really decide, you know, obviously it's going to be a historical uh, fiction, but um, is it a thriller? Things like that. So I wanted more specifics on the nothing as it seems. What is exactly happening? Um, and also I wanted to know um, how she is able to get to the front lines. Is she involved um, in the military or something like that? I just wanted to know maybe her occupation, possibly her age, um, just to hone in a little bit on the specifics. Definitely. And I'll basically echo all that. I also really liked, um, I was like a brother sister, you know, or like a sibling relationship. So I really liked that. I liked the setting um, of going into World War One and just this mystery that's going on. But again, like maybe there's so much mystery in this pitch that it's hard to like totally grab into what's going on. So how is she sneaking? Um, does she enlist? Is she in disguise? Um, and what does she believe about her brother when the letters return unopened? Does she believe he's in trouble? Is does she think he's dead? Is she trying to unravel a mystery? So sort of trying to understand like what is her main desire or want um, in in this pitch that's sort of going to be the driving force and what are the stakes if she if she doesn't make it. Um, so those are sort of my thoughts. Um, we had some really good comments coming through already. Yeah. So some similar ones like why were the letters unopened? Um, I want slightly more specifics regarding what it so you can see there's like some um overlap yeah all of us yeah. can sort of um pull out those things um oh somebody had an idea is it as a nurse giving the mm -hmm. timeline how will she get on the front lines um i love that it's world war one i'm interested to know what makes it fantasy true that's a thing that i wasn't sure about as well um because yeah like we say history fantasy but we don't really get a hint of that in the pitch um cool 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 some other things that we've seen so intriguing first question how she sneak um yeah does she become a part of the military cool Awesome. Yeah. So lots of good feedback. Hopefully, um, Ali, you can see more of that in the uh, in the comments there and take some notes. Um, Caitlin, are you cool to move on? Yeah. All right. So we've got our second pitch, Lord Sparrows, and he actually let me know he might not be able to be here live. But if you are here, definitely let us know. Um, do you want to read this pitch, Caitlin? Sure. Um... Random players across the world are selected to risk their lives in an unknown magic and superpowers based virtual reality game. The players need to survive for three years across three different levels against all odds, collecting credits, food, tools, and more. The one who survives till the end will be granted three wishes. Sweet. Now, I was super intrigued with this one because it sounds really cool. I can almost picture it. 
Um, so I, my more, the questions that I had were more specific to the players. I didn't really like that it was random players. I wanted to really see my main character, um, their friends, their enemies, um, you know, and also the three wishes really grabbed me as well. Like what are, like who's granting these wishes? Uh, why should I care? This is the thing about being specific. So to say, you know, I don't know what the main character is, but I want it to connect to those wishes. I want to be rooting for them um, to get to win. Um, yeah, your questions? Wow. <laughs> yeah, well, that was the same stuff. Um, someone, oh, Bruna said, ready player one vibes. I was totally getting yeah. that as well. And I, I loved that. Um, it's definitely a story that I would want to pick up as well. But I totally agree with Caitlin that, yeah, I'm like intrigued by the concept, but I'm not connecting to any of the characters. And some of the questions too that everybody is asking or we're asking, you might already know the answers in your head. Um, so all you need to do is put them in the pitch. So that's great. But hopefully there's some things that you're like, oh, I never thought of that or I never clarified that in my own brain or I don't know what that is yet. So hopefully these, these are definitely helpful. Helpful. Um, yeah, I was wondering how they are selected. Is there a lottery? Um, do they want to be entered or is there some, this something that they're like pulled into? What kind of odds are they facing? I wasn't really sure what unknown magic meant. Um, so I could understand superpowers, but unknown magic, I wasn't sure. Is there any way to like characterize that? And same with Caitlin, who's the main character? Why do we want them to win? Um, and what would they do with their three wishes? Like, again, what are the stakes? Um, what, what do they want? And um, like Caitlin said, like, why do we, why do we care? And not to say that we don't inwardly care because right. we care about you and your story, but like as a reader, we want that to grab us, especially from this. So um, let's see. Yeah. What are the limits? Ooh, adding limits Ooh. is always really good. Um, also Hunger games -y, definitely. Um, yeah. What happens if you fail? Great questions. Um, what will happen to those who lose? Yeah, what happens if you die? So if it's a virtual game, do you die in real life? Um, lots of great questions in here. And hopefully, um, Lord Svaros, I don't think you're here live, but hopefully you can check out all the other comments um, as we go. Am I missing any other great comments, Caitlin, that you can see that I should point out? Um, nope, you picked out all the ones that I was looking at. Cool, awesome. So let's move on to Bruna. This is actually um, one of my CPs, so hi, Brew. Um, and she says, I'm really excited about this story, but I might be biased because she's my CP. <laughs> In Imagination Land, Elias must fight an evil imaginary friend to bring his brother back to life and prevent imaginary friends from disappearing from kids' lives forever. So, I mean, I'll just jump in and say that I love the idea of imaginary friends. Um, I do personally know that this is a middle grade, so I think those vibes definitely work. Um, yeah, that we're in imagination land, that he has to get his brother back. I think, again, that sibling relationships um, are really awesome. My questions are, why are imaginary friends so important to kids' lives? So also feeds into the stakes. Um, and what kind of character is Elias? Um, so some of you put like their name, um, but just so you know when you're pitching your story people don't know anything about your character by their name so you could do like um i think in one of the formulas i've seen for um for pitches it's like instead of having their name put trait plus trait so like young boy or shy uh, uh teenager teenager or um like you could use a hobby or an occupation that they have just to tell us like a little bit you know um shy archer or like whatever they are um and Caitlin, I'll ask, uh, let you ask your question, see if I have any more that are coming in the chat. Yeah, I was, um, I didn't realize it was a middle grade. I had a feeling, but like I said, I would like more specifics on that. Um, and I wanna know like, you know, why is this person evil? Um, is it his imaginary friend? Are they going against each other? I just wanted a little more specifics. Um, I really love this one because it just seemed very unique and I never read a story about imaginary friends. So I think it would be really fun for a middle grade audience. Definitely. Um, a few others, how did the yeah. brother die? Um, and again, some of this stuff might not need to belong in the pitch. It might need to belong in the synopsis, but even from the feedback from your pitch, it could then clarify some stuff in your synopsis. Um, yeah, wanna know more about the backstory? Cool, cool, cool. Um, where is the imaginary land? So is it like integrated into their world? Is it like another dimension? Did he like fall into it? Um, yeah, did the imaginary friend kill or take the brother? Um, 
And like what you said too about the trait plus trait, you can also do that with your um, backstory of the world. So if you're not, it's not a contemporary story and doesn't seem like it is, seems like a bit of a fantasy, you could add a trait in imagination land, you know, in another dimension or just a little, just one or two words to specify. Um, and then it'll really capture and the person who is reading it will be able to visualize it a lot more. Right, exactly. Um, I love inside out vibe. <laughs> yes. Um, oop, when the imaginary friends disappears, it's because the kids kind of grow out of it. And here's like the thing where questions like if if you don't quite know how your world works and people are asking questions like this, where it's like, oh, that actually makes a lot of sense. Like I want to pull that in or or this was how I was going to do it. But maybe I want to like write two different synopsis, one where the world's like this and one where the world's like that and see which one is more compelling to people. Um, so you can see how like it really takes a village to write a book, guys. Like you can either do like tons and tons of drafts and then get feedback and and spend months and years trying to figure it all out. Um, or you can, you know, yeah, try to do it this way and see if it helps you get to that point even faster. Um, cool. All right, I think I'm gonna move on to our next one. This is from um, JJ. JJ, let us know if you're in the chat. Um, and this is the pitch. When their older sister disappears into the Forbidden Forest, two sisters must trust and work with a mysterious wolf to destroy the evil which traps their sister so they can bring her home. Um, again, I don't know. I love the sibling vibes. Um, I love that there's like two sisters working together too. Um, some of my questions was, um, is the wolf a talking wolf or part human? Um, you know, what is this for middle grade or is it young adult? Um, did the sister run away or was she kidnapped? Um, and I'm also, yeah, I'm wondering the ages and like the traits, like what are these characters like? Um, I'll look at the comments. Caitlin, do you have anything else? Yeah, I was, I, I piggyback on all what you said. Um, I wasn't sure how, if this was a middle grade or a young adult or an adult, you know, you never know. It could be a fantasy, adult fantasy, um, the specifics on the sisters, even just, I have a feeling that it's just one, but it might be a multiple point of view. So describing mm -hmm. the sisters, um, do they get along? You know, like they're things like that, just a little more on the specific side, uh, just so I can connect with the characters a little more. The story itself in the pitch is very compelling, yeah. um, but I just wanted to know a little more about them, the genre. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and also wondering too, like, is it like, are they just going to get her because they love their sister? Like, is anyone else missing her? Is she an important person in their like town or culture or family for some reason? Um, was there like some kind of like fight between them and then she ran away and now she's missing? Like, um, there's so many other like juicy details that could just like pull us in. Also, what time period is this? Is it modern or historical? Um, ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. What is evil? Yep, so we wanna know, destroy the evil. Um, what kind of evil is it? Um, two looking for the other or one, so I think it's the two sisters looking for the one. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, any other different comments that I'm missing? Um, we're getting Red Riding Hood versus Hansel and Gretel vibes, love it. Um, yeah, Kay put what happens if they don't bring her home, destroy the evil. I like that. <laughs> right. Yes, again, stakes. And that's usually the part that I miss as well. <laughs> or like it's so vague that I'm like, okay, Britt, like make it like unique. So um, yeah, what are the stakes? Um, the forest forbidden, yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Why is the forest forbidden? Good, good, good. Cool. Oh, Jennifer, I really want to show you on my pitch. <laughs> well, definitely. I mean, if this is something that you guys like, we could definitely talk about doing a round two. Let us know if that's something you'd like to see in the comments. Um, but again, you can totally do this with your friends. You can totally do this with anybody. And that's sort of, we want to give you guys the tools to then be able to do this whenever. Um, but definitely follow us on Instagram. Um, that's where we sort of announced this first. And uh, we, we can definitely let you know if we do this again. Also, if we missed any of your like big questions that you were asking in the beginning, again, now could be the time that you can ask them and we can maybe delve into them um, with some of the time we have left. Um, let's see. Okay. Ooh, and there's creepy vibes, which we like. I wonder what the stakes are. Okay, cool. All right, let's move on to the next one because we did have quite a few. Becca, 
Um, Caitlin, do you want to read this one? Sure. <clears throat> Years ago, Maggie worked on a secret and nanotechnology project to create superhumans. But what they realized, but when they realized the baby they created would grow up to be too powerful, they ordered her to dispose of him. Now, having raised the baby as her own, she must do whatever it takes to keep him and his powers a secret. Um, this was really great. It was very compelling. Um, I love superhuman vibes um, and sort of being someone who would save a baby. You know, you can really connect with the character at that point, but then you get the added bonus of like what's going to happen now because, you know, it's a secret nanotechnology project. It's probably a big government. These are all things that I was thinking about while reading. Um, I did want to know more specifics again on the main character. Um, I would assume she's an adult, but you know, I don't know. Um, I wanted to know what her occupation was within the, um, within the project. Uh, you know, did she actually work on the project or, you know, was she like sort of on the side? Um, and then also to like, what would make her risk, I would assume her job um, for the child, uh, did she lose a child of her own? What was the connection? So I wanted to connect a little more um, with the main character. Yeah, and I, I'd second all that. I'd also second that, like I love the specifics that you did put in here, like the nanotechnology, like that definitely tells us like um, some more details. Um, and yeah, just her heart for this baby. You know, we know, even if you didn't put exact traits, we know because of her desire, yeah. Um, that she has a good heart and we want to root for her already. Um, I'm wondering what kind of power does the child have? Um, you know, what, how does it relate to possibly nanotechnology? Um, and also what time period or kind of world are we in just to like get a sense of the setting? Um, cool. So we got a lot of, uh, I love stories like this. Whoa. They love mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Um, I wanted to know. Too. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. Um, Axel boost, uh, how many years have passed? That was a question of mine was how old is the child? You know, how oh, many yeah. years uh, went by? That's true. And which perspective, I mean, I'm assuming it's told by Maggie's perspective because she's the one who's talked about here, but yeah. depending on the age of the child, there could be multi POV or, you know, how does that work? Um, who is they? What does the society consider too powerful? Um, why did the creature, um, sorry, why did she create superhumans? Yeah, what is the mm -hmm. society's, right, reason for that? Um, what are the stakes of being discovered? Um, makes me wonder what will happen with his powers. Why are they too powerful? What can you do? And does, I mean, I'm assuming, is it a boy? Baby, yes. we don't know. Dispose of him. Yes. Of him. Okay, good. Yeah. So um, we don't even know if he knows what he's capable of, right? Um, question would be, how far in the future is this? Okay, good. Yeah, that um, piggybacks off yours because, you know, we don't want to know when it happened. Right, right. Um, yep, some repeat questions here. Cool. Yeah, and I definitely got some like vibes. Like I don't play a lot of um, video games, but my husband does and I like to watch them. And I felt like this was like, like made me think of some of those really epic like video, like sci-fi video games, um, which is fun. Um, yeah, does she still work there? That's a good call too, because I think we're sort of getting the sense that she does, but maybe not. Um, awesome. Cool. All right. Let's move on to our next one. And I just want to say to um, Becca and then JJ are two of my patrons. And um, we haven't done pitch stuff like this before, but we have done, hey, submit like your first page. Maybe we'll do a pitch version as well. And we do like live feedback sessions like this um, every so often as well. So it's really fun to hear more about your guys' stories because I've read um, some bits and pieces of their work before, which is fun. Um, all right. So Amethyst, I think I'm pronouncing that correct. Sorry if I'm not. Um, this is her pitch. When Aurelia unlocks a gateway to the world from her grandmother's stories, she must uncover the truth about her ancestry, ancestry before the gateway is sealed forever. Um, yeah, so I, again, all of these stories, I think there's like that immediate, like, ooh, this sounds really cool. Um, I like the gateway. I like that it's she has a relationship with her grandmother and the stories um, that are obviously connected to her in some way. Um, I, love, I love like backstories and like chosen one, but like having a cool spin on it kind of deal. Um, some of my questions was age too, you know, so obviously she heard these stories when she's younger, but how old is she now? Um, what kind of character is she? So instead of putting her name, we could put trait plus trait again. Um, 
what genre is this? It because it could go fantasy or it could go sci-fi. Um, and why is it bad that the gateway would be sealed up forever? So what are the stakes? What's sort of going on in this world? What kind of um, gateway to what kind of world are we going to? So those are my questions. Yes, I love the idea of sort of like a portal. I thought of a portal when um, mm -hmm. when I read this one and I was wanting to know like what the truth was. Um, I just, it was, seems like a very vague word in the sense where you can really, you could probably pull out a little more of the genre um, if you are a little more specific about the truth. Um, and also, yeah, this is the type of story. So I wanted to figure out, like you said, was a sci-fi or fantasy? Um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, let's see. Yeah. How does she unlock this gateway? What is the risk of the gateway being sealed? Um, yeah. Time, is it a time traveling portal or another dimension? Um, whoop, the comments just jumped. Hold on. What are the grandmother's stories? Again, some of these details could definitely go more in synopsis, but great questions. Um, some repeats. And let's see. Oh, why science fantasy? And adding her age would definitely help with clarity. Oh, this is Haley. Okay, so Haley, this is your Instagram account. Okay, awesome. Um, adding her age would definitely help with clarity. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So excited to revise this and make the synopsis. Yes, so cool. Um, also, I just saw this. How does she know that there's an ancestry secret? Why is it important to her to find out? So all great questions. Um, Kim also, hi Kim, says, I would add a bit more personal stakes and clarify the stakes regarding the gateway being sealed forever. Awesome. Um, cool. Oh, is the grandmother still? Oh, I clicked the wrong one. Oh no, sorry. Is the grandmother still alive? Still alive. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, I was just reading it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that's a great question too. Is she going to be like a main player in this? Um, awesome. Great, great questions. Let's keep moving right along because I know we have we have to be done at the top of the hour. So Janine said, um, a young boy must embrace his new family after losing everything in a storm. Um, so I think like I always love when, yeah, there's like a family element and like found family. So that really connects with me. Um, so I'm wondering like, is this um, biological family, which I'm looking at Caitlin's notes, sorry, <laughs> but I had that question too. Um, and yeah, what is this, um, like a contemporary story? Is this storm, does it have any like other kind of elements? Like, are we in a fantasy world or a regular world? Um, stuff like that. Caitlin, do you have any? Yeah. And, um, young boy, I get a sense, but I just want to know if we can get a little more, um, mm -hmm. specific in that, um, because, uh, you know, like a five-year-old will have a different experience than like a 15-year-old. So we're going to get a little more of an idea here. Um, it seems like a contemporary. And yeah, I, w I wanted to know who his his new family was because that would make it, that would make it really um, specific. And also it might catch different people's eyes when it's like, you know, he has to go to a foster home or is, is, you know, on people he has never met before in his family, um, estranged family members. So just digging a little more deeper into that was mostly what I wanted to know. Definitely. And like playing off that, like, do, does this boy want to embrace this family or is this something you said, um, they must, but right. like, why? Um, and so what are the stakes again? What happens if he doesn't embrace the family? Um, and is there any part of him that wants to, if so, why, um, different things like that, that'll just make it more unique and more tangible. Um, let's see yeah, more about the family. Is he adopted? Um, did his old family die in the storm? Um, which I'm assuming he did. Um, is this a, a family that's good or bad? So we could have maybe doesn't want to embrace it because it's not a great family. Um, let's see. What's the urgency of embracing the new family? Um, am I missing anything else? Some of the same questions. Do, 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 do. What kind of storm, hurricane or tornado? And that might not be like a super big, like, later kind of plot point, but it could just make your pitch like that much more tangible by defining what kind of storm it is. Um, yeah, maybe something about his personality could make the start of it stronger. So um, a broken and bitter young boy. So then we can sort of what the character arc is going to be. That's really great. I like that. Um, cool. 
I love it. All right. Um, ooh, wrong screen. Caitlin, do you want to read the next one? Yeah. Um, I thought this was an interesting one. Uh, Peter is bad. Hook is good. Wendy falls in love with Hook and has to stop Peter. I always love a twisted fairy tale. So I was really intrigued with this one. Um, my main questions were, why? why? Why would Wendy fall in love with Hook? I would assume just from reading it that she would be like, the main character in this one um, and what is their connection so like how how would she see him um and then how would they fall in love um also to what are they stopping peter from doing i don't know how close this would be to um us you know the main story or mm -hmm. if it's going to go off on a different type of, of adventure. Um, I would like to see uh, a little more specifics on what we're doing. Like, what is she, what are they doing to stop him? Why are they stopping him? Agreed. And actually, um, Bear, let me know if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, gave us some clarity in the comments already. After Wendy and her brothers are taken to Neverland by Peter Pan, she learns a sinister truth to Peter and that Hook is not as evil as he may seem. Um, okay, so that definitely gives us a little more context, although we loved like the original like um, twist, you know, Peter Pan, bad, Hook, good. Um, I'm wondering about ages too. Like is Hook then aged down or is Wendy aged up? Is that... Um, what kind of um, age category are you writing for? Um, that's a question that I had as well. Um, this gives me once upon a time vibes. Yes, Definitely. I love, love that so, so much. Um, what is bad about Peter? Yep. So adding something about that would definitely intrigue us more. She said um, Hook is younger. In oh, this. fun. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I'm not, I'm, I want to read this story. Yeah. I'm, a big, I'm a big Peter fan. Um, just sort of legend fan. It's fun. Um, to why does it? Why Peter doesn't want Wendy to fall for Hook? Yeah, we could hear more a little bit about Peter's backstory and um, even the sinister truth. Mm -hmm. You know, I would like to dive in a little more with you know a few words. You know, is he is he going against Wendy? Um, does it have nothing to do with her? Because I feel like if it did have something to do with her, it would it may send her off to Hook. But these are just things that I'm thinking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Reading. Definitely. Love it. Um, cool. And like people are just liking it in general and like being really excited about it. So hopefully that's encouraging. Um, oh, we get some more clarity. Peter is using fairies, lost boys, and mermaids to keep himself young. Ooh. See, like that. Yes. Like and you're, and it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and you're getting there. You're getting there. Right. And yeah, as we're asking these questions, like you're getting, hopefully getting a sense of which things like people are like, yes, that's what we want. All right. To make sure we get to all of them. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay. We got to keep moving. Um, Alex, a non-witch ventures out searching for a reverse spell for her brother in the wizarding world before he turns into stone completely. Okay. So um, I liked all this. I like that she's a non-witch. Um, I'm wondering if her brother is a wizard or if he's also non. Um, and I'm wondering again, what are their ages? Um, I think those were my, my main questions. And like, is the wizarding world, I'm thinking ultimately like already like Harry Potter, like it's sort of in secret. Is this in secret or is it like integrated? So those are my, my main questions. Yeah. I did wonder if it was a secret thing. Um, I was a little stuck on the non-witch. Um, that does that mean human or does that mean that there's something else? I just wanted to be specific, you know, if it was a fairy or something. Um, and, uh, did we say anything about ages? Um, you know, is this a teenager or is it, you know, what age? Um, so right. I'd like to know that. Yeah. And definitely like the stone part, uh, turning to stone is definitely super intriguing. Ali is agreeing. Um, and uh, why will he turn to stone? Is it a punishment for something he's done? Um, or is it some evil force, um, evil character? And what is their motivation? Um, let's see, let's see. I love that a muggle needs a spell, agreed. Um, let's see. What did he do to push him to almost turn into stone? So maybe it's coming from him instead of someone else. Um, 
Cool. Yeah, we want to know that. But that's definitely, I think, like the most unique thing about this pitch. So I think like delving into that um, would be really great. Um, and But I love that there's like really firm stakes in here too before he turns to stone completely. Um, I'm going to keep going to make sure that we get to everybody. I'm sorry we slowed down a little bit. Um, but um, Marion, if you are here, let us know. Um, and this is your pitch. Olivia is a successful creative executive up for a big promotion at work. That is until her mind wakes up one morning five feet apart from her body at all times. Out of sync, she misses out on every single opportunity that follows and must learn to live with this new handicap in order to get her dream job. Um, so this is obviously very like different and cool and that definitely um, grabbed me. Um, and the same things that are grabbing me are also making me confused. So I liked that her um, mind was five feet apart from her at all times. I'm wondering what, how she knows it's five feet apart. Like. Does she see something physically or the five feet apart was very specific. Um, and like what, yeah, what does that look like? Um, and what kind of steps, this would be something to sort of look in the synopsis, but what kind of steps does she take to try to live with or overcoming this handicap? Um, but yeah, Caitlin. Yeah, my biggest uh, question on this one was, what is what does the out of sync mean? Um, while you wanted to see more, I think, specifics, like, what does it look like? I was wondering, like, is she, is her speech delayed before she can speak? Um, is it, is she confused? Is she, like, moving her body when she shouldn't? Um, so that's what I was looking for. I think it's a really intriguing synopsis. It's not anything I've ever read before. Mm -hmm. And also too, I we really focused on work in this pitch, but I just wonder how this affects her life. Um, you know, is she married? Does she have kids? You know, um, what does her family look like? And how is it affecting them on top of her job as well? Right. Agreed. Agreed. All good things. There's definitely some great feedback for you in the comments, um, but also there's some confusion, um, which is some of the things we've also um, already talked about. Is it psychological? Is she going through some kind of mental mental turmoil or is her mind literally five feet apart from her? Um, so yeah, um, some of the same questions, but it's definitely like a, you're grabbing us, but like pull us in even more by giving um, us more. And what opportunities is she missing out on? That's the other thing. Like, what is her job? Um, does her family know? All really good questions um, to play off of. All right. I think this is, this is our last one. And then we're going to wrap up by giving you guys a few more resources to look into, um, but we hope you guys have really enjoyed this. Last one, um, ACB, AC Baxter writes, um, in a world where X race, so placeholder, is extinct or nearly extinct, I think, the last survivor of said race must learn how to protect themselves in order to face the ones who killed his entire race and have their revenge. Um, I was like a good revenge story, um, you know, especially like if their family is in peril. Um, so that definitely intrigued me. I'm wondering what race this is. So that might be something that you just, you're trying, you don't want to share or something you're not sure about. So I definitely do some brainstorming around that. Um, and let's see, I'm wondering about age again. Um, Caitlin, what kind of things are you wondering? wondering? I wondered about the revenge specifically, um, you know, is his intention, his or her intention to kill all of them too. And then they'll be the only person I guess left. Um, so I was just a little confused on what the revenge specifically meant mm -hmm. uh, to the survivor. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And uh, agreed. Like it feels a little bit thinner than some of the other pitches, which is totally fine. Cause this might be like, you might have thought of this a few days ago. You might have been sitting on this and not able to brainstorm, but hopefully some of these questions um, will help you uh, flesh it out. Um, how will they protect themselves? Definitely digging into that. Is it, are we in a fantasy world again? Is it magic or is it um, something else? Um, some distinction of who the MC is and what their name is or some traits would be great. Um, how did the killer uh, race kill an entire race? That would definitely make it unique and pull us in. Um, and that definitely shows a lot of conflict as well, because if these people are that bad, you know, you're already showing what um, this person is up against. 
Right, exactly. And Ali is assuming this is a chosen to be the last survivor, but maybe not. Um, but they're asking why, if this person was chosen, why are they chosen? Do they have a specific skill that allowed them to survive? Um, yeah, what is the revenge? How did they survive? Um, cool, cool, cool. Oh, and I think AC Baxter, it has more depth, but I don't want to give too much away. Right. So this might be something that would be really great to find a couple of trusted writer friends or uh, friend readers and give them more of those specifics so they can really give you some some honest and like more detailed feedback. Um, so you know what's working, the decisions that you have made that maybe you didn't want to share publicly, what is really working and grabbing them and what things are still confusing. Um, so that would be great. Awesome. Um, so. We um, are so glad that you guys joined us for an hour to do this. Let us know if this was super helpful, even as someone who didn't um, submit their pitch. Do you feel like you could find some friends to do this with? Um, do you feel like you're going to start with a pitch or are you going to start with a synopsis? Even if you're watching the replay, you can let us know that in the comments. Um, and then, Caitlin, do you want to tell everybody a little bit about um, this resource here? Um, yes. So I have been using this resource for a very, very long time. I found it years ago. Um, and also Tara mentioned it as well, which sort of, uh, made it legit in my mind. Um, so Susan Dennard wrote this, um, blog article about the one page synopsis and I reference it for every single book that I write, um, whether it's at the beginning stage or after. It's, a, it's really broken down. I believe she uses a Star Wars reference. Um, it really breaks it down to all the little nitty gritty of a one page synopsis. Um, so yeah, I would highly recommend checking it out, bookmarking it and um, saving it as a resource. If you do ever get confused about how to do a synopsis or you know an agent um, or you know a pitch contest, they ask you to do a synopsis, um, definitely bookmark this one. Yeah. Yeah, so if you are more in the place of like, I'm ready to jump into my synopsis and I wanna write this and like shop this out, yeah, definitely a great resource. We've linked it in the description below. Um, and if you're more in the pitch area, I've also, so we shared one formula in this um, live stream, but I included that formula along with the two, two other formulas um, that I've seen commonly used and examples for them in the description below as well. So you guys have some reference point and some like framework for what you guys are doing. I love that you guys are saying um, that you love this stream, that it was great. Um, yes, and you'd love to do another one. So that's really cool. So Caitlin and I will chat about that and see if that's a thing that we can do sometimes. Um, maybe you can figure out I don't know, synopsis, synopsis would be hard. I was gonna say, maybe we could do a synopsis next time, but that's spoiling everything uh, in front of everyone. So maybe yeah. not that, pitches, or even um, like uh, the, the, not summary. Is it the summary that goes in the query? What is it called? I, was, I think it's a summary, right? When that you put a query that doesn't tell the end of the story, we could even yeah. do that. Um, but thank you guys so much for joining us. Yes, thank you. Connect with you. Um, both of us obviously have YouTube channels, so definitely check out. We might do maybe a part two on Caitlin's channel next time, so definitely subscribe to her. We are super active on Instagram and Twitter, so we'd love to connect with you guys. Um, and yeah, anything else, Caitlin, before we sign off? I didn't really have no, thank you all for coming. I, I, I know Brittany has a great uh, following, so I just I didn't expect you guys to be so involved. So this is so great um, to find another bunch of writers to connect with. And you guys, you guys were also helpful um, to all the people. And thank you so much to the people who like showed their pitches, because yeah. I'm not sure I would ever be that brave to do that. So you guys are awesome. So, yeah, yeah so thanks for coming. Yeah, we give you a round of applause definitely for all of the people <laughs> that were super brave to do that. And yes, definitely stay tuned um, to see if we do another one like this. And we, got, we hope you have a great rest of your week. And uh, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.